In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll decipher the meaning of a common instruction that isn't as straightforward as it first appears. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. While many patterns give explicit row-by-row -row instructions, not all patterns do. Tersely written pattern instructions can trip up knitters who are used to having everything spelled out. Today, we're going to look at one instruction in particular, which is often used in sweater patterns, but can crop up in other projects too. The instruction is decrease at each end of next row. Often, there is an additional instruction to repeat the decreases on subsequent rows, but regardless, the instruction to decrease at each end of the row is often misinterpreted. Many knitters believe they should work and knit two together at both edges, working the first two stitches of the row together and the last two stitches together. Typically, this will not give the best result, and it's not what the instruction is actually calling for. Let's break it down. Typically, the intent is for the knitter to work the decreases near the edges, but not in the edges. So right here, I have uh, worked these decreases here. I have worked two plain knit stitches, and then I worked a decrease, and then I worked until I had four stitches left at the end. I worked two together, and then I left the last two stitches plain. Now, the reason that, that you would place the decreases near the edges but not in the edges is that frequently you're going to end up seaming this edge to another piece of fabric or you might be picking up stitches along the edge, um, something like that. And when you do that, you want a nice clean line of stitches available um, where you can do that pickup or that seaming. And so if you have a decrease in the edges, that makes it much more difficult. So what I've done down here is I've worked a knit two together in the first two stitches of each row. I've done this every couple of rows here. And then I did a knit two together at the end. So you can see that they're much less tidy looking. But let me show you close up. If you were going to try to pick up one stitch, pick up a stitch along the edge and you needed to pick up between the first and second, second stitches of the edge, once you get to a place where there is a decrease, then you run into a problem. So you either have to avoid that, or you have to come around this way, you try to try to pick up between there, and then you have um, that pickup line that you have is really kind of uh, uneven looking. So it's much simpler um, and it's much better looking if you can pick up uh, along a clean, unbroken edge of stockinette stitches. Now, you might not be seaming this. You might have the edges uh, remain exposed. And in that case, you often are working some sort of a selvage stitch. You're working the edge stitch in a, in a particular way to make it look attractive, either with a chain or, or something else. And so again, you don't wanna work the decrease in that selvage stitch, you wanna work it the next stitch in. Now, if your directions are very explicit and are telling you to work, to knit two together in the very first stitch, then by all means do that. Um, that's pretty common in garter stitch scarves where there's some kind of biasing um, going on as you're creating it. But if it's just saying decrease at each end of the row, then you, you are going to want to place your decreases um, a stitch or two or three in from the actual edge. Now the other thing that we want to look at is that these the decreases that I use here are not the same decreases. At this edge I used a left leaning decrease and at this edge I used a right leaning decrease. Now, so what does that mean and how do you know which, which decrease is left leaning and which is right leaning? Well, let's take a look up close. So when you decrease two stitches together, one of these stitches is going to end up on top of the other. So let's do a knit two together because that's the most common decrease. So to do a knit two together, you come over to the left of the two stitches and then you insert your needle to, through it like this. So you can see that the working needle is sort of pointed right ish, it's sort of pointed to the right. You do kind of manipulate it back and forth, but as it's going through the stitches, it's pointing to the right. Wrap the yarn or pick it, whatever you do. And then 
the result is that the stitch on the left is on top and it looks like it's leaning to the right. So remember the working needle was pointing to the right as we are working the decrease and the result is that the lean is to the right. It looks like the decrease is leaning to the right. So let's look at another type of decrease called an SSK. So that increase is done by slipping a stitch as if to knit, that changes the stitch mount. You slip another stitch to knit, changes that stitch mount. Then you use your left needle to insert through the fronts of those two stitches. So now you're ready to work it. Now look, the working needle is pointing to the left as it's sitting um, through these two stitches. So when we work the stitch, the result is the stitch on the right is on top this time and the resulting decrease looks like it's leaning to the left. So again, you can remember which is left and which is right based on where the working needle is pointing as you're working the decrease. So often when you look, if you ever work with charts and there is a decrease, you will see that one of the decreases is denoted with a a slash to the left and the other with a slash to the right. That tells you which direction the decrease is leaning. Now in most cases you're going to want to place the stitch at least, place the decrease at least one stitch in from the edge. Here I've placed it in, I've worked the third and fourth stitches together. I've left the first two um, plain, but you could work it in the second and third stitches. Um, and you could also, I've got them, uh, these decreases so that I have a left leaning decrease over here, which is the SSK, and the right leaning decrease over here, which is a knit two together. But you could do it in the opposite way if you want. Um, there's no right or wrong, there's only be consistent. So if you want a rule, <laughs> you can use knit one, SSK, knit to the last three stitches, knit two together, knit one. That's a very common method of working mirror decreases. It leaves that salvage stitch available and it creates this defined line of decreases. Not everybody is going to want that every time, but if you want a default method, that's a very valid way of doing it. So let's look at some garments and see how the decreases were worked um, in this case. You can see at the underarms here, well, at least you can see on this side and you can see on the other side, that these are decreases that are leaning in the direction. Um, we say they're leaning away from the edge or they're leaning toward the area changing in size. So this is what's changing in size and the decreases are leaning in that way. Uh, what you can see here is that I have a, a full stockinette stitch, line of, of stockinette stitches next to the ribbing and then the decreases are in, in the stitch next to that. So that meant I worked these decreases two stitches in from the edge because the actual edge stitch lies inside from where when I picked up the stitches. I chose to do something a little different along the edge of the v-neck here. I had both a lace pattern and a cable pattern and I chose uh, to keep a full column of stockinette stitches next to the ribbing, which means there's an, and there's another um, column of stockinette in size. So the decreases were worked two stitches away from the original edge. And I didn't always use the same decrease. I changed based on what was going on with the pattern. If there was a cable crossing going on or if there was something going on with the lace, I tried to maintain the stitch pattern as best I could while it was getting decreased out. So in this case, I didn't have a standard method of working the decreases along this edge, but I did at the underarm. So for this sweater, the ribbed edging was knit along with the bodice of the sweater. And the decreases were worked just outside the edge of the ribbing. But what you'll see is, you can probably see that these decreases are leaning toward the edge and not toward the area that's changing in size. So here's a close up. You can see uh, a left leaning decrease, a left leaning decrease. Those are going all the way up. This particular designer is Nora Gone, and this is frequently um, her method of decreases. And you can see over here at the edge, these decreases at the underarm are pointed to uh, toward the edge as well. Um, but 
a stitch or two in from the edge so that you still have a line, a full line of stockinette stitches near the seam and then the decreases are pointing toward the seam. Now for this uh, summer top, the, the bottom edge is much wider than the top. It's kind of a swing type of garment. And then there's this decorative panel that goes uh, vertically up here. And instead of having decreases worked near the waist or near here, they were placed in the center here, pointing toward this panel all the way going up. This is the same designer as that gray uh, sweater, Nora Gon. So you can see that these are pointing toward the vertical column over here and these are pointing toward the vertical column over there. Now for this sweater, I have uh, the decreases leaning away from the edge. They're leaning toward the area, changing in size. And I place the decreases right next to the selvage so that this line of decreases is right up next to the seam. There isn't a, a line of stockinette that um, that continues up with the decreases to the left. It's just right up next to the seam. Again, I was decreasing uh, a cable that was crossing to the left. So I, I kept my decreases so that they also leaned to the left as um, they continued up near the edge. I just felt like that um, sort of preserved the continuity even as the cable disappeared that having the decreases lean in that direction to me seem like the best choice. This is the sweater that I was wearing um, at the top of the video. Um, this is another v-neck, seem to wear those a lot, um, and I put the decreases for the v-neck to the right of the cable so that I could maintain this cable and I'll show you up close how I worked these decreases at the edges. You can see I have a, a single line of stockinette coming up right near the edge, if you can tell, but the actual decreases themselves are pointing toward the edge. So uh, you still have that sort of line of continuity going up right along the edge, but the decreases are pointing toward the edge, not toward the area changing in size. Now I could have chosen to have uh, the decreases uh, pointing to the right instead of pointing to the left. Uh, and I could have had a line of stockinette with the decrease right next to that that would have kind of mirrored these two um, columns of stockinette stitches over there. But I didn't. Uh, I, don't, I, I, I went through that decision making process. I decided I wanted the two columns of stockinette here to help with um, the knit to purl to ribbing over here, but I felt I wanted the stockinette over here to just look plain. That was a design decision. Um, I could have easily done it the other way. While you can decide that you always want to work your decreases in the same way every time, it can be fun to experiment with other options. If you aren't sure what the result is going to look like in your particular situation, knit up a swatch and try different options for decrease placement as well as lean. Swatches are a great learning tool for discovering what your options are as well as what your preferences are. If you have any questions or comments about this video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks, and there's a link to that down in the description box below. In addition to my Technique Tuesday videos, I have Casual Fridays, a weekly podcast style video where I talk about knitting and knitting related topics. For a playlist of my Casual Friday videos, you can click over here. And to subscribe to my channel, you can click up here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.